Have their favorite crust. Uh, we just want to know how to make our own favorite. Plus, if some customers come in and they want a certain kind, we need to be able to know how to make that also. So, uh, chefs in general, they're good at the toppings, uh, all the meat and all the veggies. That's fine. But sometimes we get a bit, we forget uh, how to make those various crusts. So the big thing here, we're starting with uh, uh, 10 ounces of flour in these two, and then we have a little bit more in this one, but. Um, this is going to be, we're going to have a thin and crispy style, a hand tossed style, and a poofy poofy style, we'll say, the, the poofiest kind. And the big difference in these three is the amount of water. The thin and crispy style is going to have the least amount of water, the poofy style is going to have the most water, and then the thick one in between. Talking about, they still have the, the basic 2% salt, baker's percent, and they all have uh, one uh, half a percent dry yeast. The thin style, we're going to put in about 3% oil, just for fun. Uh, the hand tossed one, we're going to put in about 3% honey. And a pan ordinaire is just going to be flour, water, yeast, and salt, the basics. But you could put a little honey or a little oil in any of these and uh, it should work out fine. So 55% hydration, we're going to start with this thin and crispy style here first. So just like making any kind of yeasted bread, you're going to mix all your dry ingredients in there first. If you're using uh, instant yeast, we're using instant yeast. So it mixes in with the flour. And you can see just a little bit of oil floating there in the water. We'll mix that to hydrate. Maybe the hardest one to get to hydrate because it has such a low amount of water. A lot of times the uh, lower the water amount, the more mixing a dough takes. The more kneading a dough takes, takes a little bit more energy to get that water forced into the flour. We're using bread flour. My person could use all-purpose flour. And you should have a pizza dough. As you can see, by varying the amount of water, you come out with a pizza dough anyway. It might not be the kind you like, but you'll have a pizza dough. But if you're shooting for consistency, you have to weigh and measure everything. All right, I'm liking that for hydration. It's not needed yet, it's not developed yet. So we'll let that rest just for five minutes. And we'll uh, throw down our uh, hand toss style of dough here. With a little bit of honey in it. So that was in the water, the honey. Now we did use a small amount of oil in our first dough. The most oil, I did see a few recipes with 10 to 15% oil. That's just kind of high for my taste. But it makes nice pizza dough. The crumb in the flour there. Hydration, we're just shooting for hydration right now. And of course you can mix bigger batches of these in a mixer if you're gonna do it in your restaurant. Hydrated. And here's our good friend, Pan Ordinaire. 
basic, basic, basic bread. Flour, water, yeast, and salt. 2% salt, half a percent yeast. And this one has the most water. This is 67% water. So we have 67%, 60%, 55%. get that hydrated, get all the flour into contact with some water, and when that happens, then we have gluten forming. So when the proteins in the flour are hydrated, that's when you get the stringy elastic dough. Now this is a little bit bigger batch than these other two. They were just 10 ounces of flour or two cups. And this would be five cups of flour right here, just for fun. As you can see, this is the most wet dough. Sticks to you. We're going to let all those rest just okay, for five so minutes. Back, uh, these have just uh, been allowed to rehydrate for about five minutes. Let's get that stiffest dough first, the one that's going to be the thin and crispy style pizza. As you can see, it's pretty tough, not very extensible. So it's going to take a little more strength, a little more power applied to get that turned over, turned over. That's kneading. You fold over the dough, fold over the dough. You take a rubber band, you fold it in half. Things get stronger, stronger, stronger. But just like a rubber band, you're going to mix that to a point where it starts to break. Stop. Let that rubber band rest for another five minutes. We'll go to our uh, hand toss style of dough here. A little bit more wet. As you can see, it's a little bit more, a little bit more extensible. So in a sense, it's easier to mix. The dough stretches out a little bit easier, stretches out a little bit easier. And again, it's kneaded, it's first kneading until it starts to break on the top. We'll let that rest for about five minutes. We'll go to our pan ordinaire, our softest dough, our most extensible dough. And these uh, yeasted doughs are described with three, three words. Number one, extensible. That means how far does the dough stretch out? Number two, elastic. How much does it snap back? And number three, tenacity. Even if I can stretch it out, how much power does it take to stretch it out? So this dough has the most extensibility. It has very il little elasticity at this point in time. So as you see, it stretches out, but it doesn't snap back. Also, it's very low in tenacity. These were really hard to stretch out. This one stretches out very easily. So in some senses, that makes it the easiest one to mix. But it is kind of sticky. That is, it starts out adhesive. It sticks to you. We're going to mix it until it turns cohesive. It sticks to itself. Now the banging is just for therapy for the baker. But you want to stick it to the table and fold it over. Stick it to the table, fold it over. So you can see our gluten's tighten up there, but I'm to the point where the gluten's are breaking, so I'm going to stop. So we're ready. We've let this rest we'll just about rest five, five minutes, minutes here. Let's go to this thin and crispy one first of all. Play magic uh, disappearing dough here. So now as you can see, as the dough rests a little bit, it becomes more extensible. So now I'm able to knead it a second time. Now if this were a machine, you would put it in the machine and let it mix. But by hand, to avoid a lot of uh, excessive toil on your arms, let the dough do its thing all by itself. And of course, we're just making one pizza dough. If you had a bunch of dough, you would uh, have to portion off the dough and then put it into a rounded shape. If you want a rounded pizza, 
So there's our pizza dough ready. This will have to relax one night in the refrigerator. If you're making it at home, several hours at least rested in the refrigerator. But we're gonna put, store it in some plastic bags. We'll put a tag on it, we'll label it so we remember which one it is. And then here is our hand toss style. As you can see, more extensible. Now this one I think, I don't think it's quite ready yet, so I'm gonna let him rest just a little bit more and come back to that in about five minutes. Let's check our friend here, Pan Ordinaire. Ah, extensible, extensible, extensible. That's when it's ready for its next kneading. Over we go, over we go. That second kneading, it's a little more gentle than the first one. It's the same basic technique, but a little bit more gentle. And this dough is probably ready to go, except that it would be too big for the oven. So at this point in time, then you'd want, or let, you could let it rest for 10 minutes, and then get it down to its more similar size that would fit on the board or at your house. That would rest overnight. If you wanted smaller pizzas, of course, you could have a little appetizer sized pizza. Put that in a sheet pan, let it rest overnight. This one might be ready to go, just rested one minute. We wanna smooth that out a tad. Ah, there we go. So as you pack them away, you wanna keep it uh, tight on the top and a little pinched belly button there on the bottom. So that would also go to rest overnight in a plastic bag. By the next day, they'll be nice and ferment, uh, have good fermentation. Nice and relaxed. We made them uh, yesterday them out real easy. and just stored them in bags. And to get them out of there, the biggest thing in the shaping is to remember not to turn it over, not to fold it over. So if you do mix your dough and retard the dough in the refrigerator, it has some good advantages. Number one, the dough is going to get more flavor since it has more fermentation in it. And number two, it's more extensible, it's more relaxed. So when we go to portion it out, shape it, it's friendlier. <clears throat> so some pizza places, they'll uh, uh, mix theirs a day ahead of time, some two days ahead of time. And so this, we're starting off with our most wet dough, the basic pan ordinaire, the one we've been making baguettes with and everything. In some ways, it's the easiest dough to work with. In some ways, it's the most difficult dough to work with. Since it's so, since it has so much water in it, you just have to be careful that it doesn't stick to everything. But if you use some flour, as you can see, you just let gravity help you shape that. And it doesn't take a lot of tossing or any machine. You're just working on the back of your hands, work out toward the edge. And since it's so sticky, we're gonna put it on a piece of paper. We'll put the toppings on there then it's real easy to take your peel, oven peel, slide it into the oven, let it bake for about five minutes, lift it up, and pull the paper out. So, pan ordinaire, that, that'll be our poofiest dough. Since the dough's so wet, it really likes to poof up a pretty good amount. So we'll hold that for just a little bit. And then we'll go to our, uh, what most people, if they're gonna hand toss the pizza, this is kind of the one that they like. So the one with 60% hydration, it's got a little bit of sugar in it. Not very much, just about 3%. These are all made with 10 ounces of flour. A size you could make at home pretty easy. So with the hand toss one, we just want it to be somewhat extensible. And usually you start out with your hands, the backs of your hands, stretch, stretch on your knuckles. If you practice at home with a side towel that's kind of damp, it has about the same feel to it. And eventually it uh, starts going up in the air a little bit. 
starts going up in the air a little bit. And as it goes up in the air, you have two, you're going in two directions. It's got to go up and around at the same time. If you just toss it up, no centrifugal force. If you just try to spin it, no upward motion just gets stuck on your hands. So with a little bit of uh, those two directions and relatively round, it should toss out for you. Now we're going to put it on a board, plywood board. And we're going to use a little bit of white rice flour to keep it uh, lubricated. So the rice flour is going to be a little, it's uh, more like sand. So semolina flour, cornmeal, uh, just not something too coarse like polenta, you break your tooth off. Uh, but something a little more finely granulated. You could use flour, but the, um, you have to use a lot of flour. Sometimes it gets in your oven and gets kind of thick on the bottom of the pizza. So rice flour works out very nice. So we're going to, uh, then we'll top this one. We'll put that one in the oven also. And then while we're portioning them out here, we're going to portion out or flatten out the thin and crispy style. And that's the stiffest dough. This one's only 55% hydration. And it's going to be paper, paper thin. So if you go to toss that, since the dough is so dry, it's not extensible. So you'd want to roll that out with a rolling pin, either by hand or a rolling pin. If you can do a lot of them, then we have a rolling machine. We have a machine, so we'll go over to the machine and check it out. So if you're going to make a lot of pizza, it's nice to have a machine help you out a little bit. And uh, this is a sheeter. It goes both directions. It's going to go this way, back that way. Sometimes when you see in a pizza place, it goes one direction and comes out. You just have to refeed it through. But uh, we're going to start down here with the number five, see what happens. Every time it goes through the machine, you have to turn it 90 degrees. So it eventually comes out round. All right, we got a little squeeze on that one. This just takes a lot of the rolling pin work out of it. And the machine takes it down very, very gently. It's getting bigger. One more time. It's pretty thin, but we're going to take it down one more little teeny weeny notch here. It's kind of pizza the way I grew up, nice and thin. So if you wanted to toss that a little bit, nice and thin. We're back here with our rice flour. Thin and crispy style. Almost too big for the board. So keep it lubricated. So we'll do some basic toppings here, get these in the oven, see what they look like when they're baked off. Got a basic pizza sauce, little sauteed onion, little uh, red wine reduced, little tomato paste, and then a uh, good quality canned tomato, San Marzano, about the best. So a fresh tasting sauce, don't overcook it. Not too thick, if you want it on there, keep the crust nice and crispy, not too much water. We'll put some melting cheese on there, some mozzarella. That'll keep things soft. We'll do a basic sausage.
A little mushroom action. And then some uh, Parmesan on the top for a little caramelization. Pizza. Any day's pizza. Buddy. So we'll slide that one in the oven right away. Yeah, so let's go over to the oven. Uh -huh. So it's nice to have a nice pizza oven. We've got a great deck oven here at school. We've got it turned up to 500 degrees. We've got some good bottom heat going on there. But if you don't have great equipment, you can always make pizza on the grill. Take the dough, put it in the grill, get a few grill marks going on, flip it over, put your topping on, close the grill, or uh, take it off your grill in your restaurant. Just let it go in an oven for a while, melt everything. Comes out nice. Just making sausage and cheese. I'll just slide these in, I don't know if you want to, you can probably take a picture from there, it'd be fine. Yeah. So here's our uh, pan ordinaire style pizza, it's still on the paper. So we'll put that right in on the paper since it's so sticky, it's hard to get it off of a board. So I think we're good to go here in our pizzas. We got the thin and crispy style, nice and brown, don't be afraid. And this is our pan ordinaire, the poofiest one, we'll put that over there. And this is the hand tossed one, we'll put that right there. It's a good idea after they come out to let them cool off just a few minutes on a wire rack because there's a lot of moisture under there that wants to escape so your dough stays, your crust stays nice and crispy. Okay, so here we go. We're ready to slice. Nice and crispy, nice and crispy. You see that one? You got your thin and crispy shell. This was our hand tossed. As you can see, it's poofier on the outside. The 
As you can see how poofy the edge of the crust is there. And this was our pan ordinary. As you can see, these two are pretty close to the same today, but it doesn't always work out that way. But this one is more poofy, not the thin and crispy style. <coughs> As you can see, the crumb, you can see the crumb is more open, more poofy than that one. So most poofy, not as poofy, and thin and crispy style over here. So it all depends on what kind of crust you like or what kind of crust the customers like. Very easy to change just by the amount of water. <laughs>